me call back into session the workshop part of the Commonwealth Transportation Board's February uh, meeting. What we're going to be doing today, we have a couple items to wrap up uh, in the um, workshop uh, uh, session. Uh, then we'll go uh, into uh, our formal action item. And of course, before we start that, uh, the first part of that will be public comment. Um, yesterday, uh, we had a briefing on Virginia Beach light rail and charged the subcommittee on rail uh, based on the discussion we had to come up with some recommendations. And so uh, I know they met this uh, morning, and, uh, and Ms. Mitchell, I'll turn it over to you uh, for a report from the subcommittee. Sure. And um, first of all, I'd just like to thank the members of the subcommittee for uh, meeting a little earlier than usual this morning. Uh, and uh, Mr. Malvin joined us as well. What we've done is we've drafted a um, resolution which um, we'll hand out at the start of the business meeting. And um, essentially what we've done is we have um, reaffirmed the steps that the Commonwealth has taken over the next, over several years to support the project and outline some of the, out the um, sort of the continued demonstration of commitment that the Commonwealth has shown and uh, directed the uh, chairman of the CTB to I'd say authorize. <coughs> authorize, sorry. Um, <laughs> we changed it to authorize. Um, the, uh, the chairman to send a letter um, informing the city that they will need to authorize HRT to move forward with the vehicle purchase and also to execute the MOU uh, between DRPT, uh, HRT, and the city by April 30th as a demonstration of its commitment to the project in order for, um, and, and otherwise, in absence of those affirmative actions, uh, the CTB may consider moving uh, the funds in the next six-year plan. So I don't know if any of the members want to add anything or? Um, let me just say, I, I'm very comfortable with the resolution we came up with because it does reaffirm our commitment to the project, it makes it clear that there's a responsibility and an obligation on behalf of the locality to make its commitment known and to demonstrate it and to do it quickly. And uh, I, I, so I'm very comfortable with it. I want to commend John for his input and in working with us on this. And I think we've come up with a solution that I think addresses all the concerns and gives us some direction. Uh, as soon as we can, so that if in fact the money is not going to be used, we can carry out our fiduciary responsibilities to reallocate it. But I'm hoping we don't have to get there. Uh, Ms. And I just wanted to add, you know, one thought to that, that as we were reaffirming our commitment to the project, which we still believe is a very good project for the Commonwealth, that we wanted to give them enough time to you know, follow our recommendations on what needed to happen. And so we, there is a deadline put in there of April 30th, which we thought would allow them to accommodate the um, grant application and the memorandum of understanding. So I thought that was important from the rail committee. Uh, Mr. Rose. Thank you. Um, not to be repetitive, but uh, thank Mr. Malvin for coming to the meeting today and providing a lot of good input clearly. Uh, an advocate for the project. I think we all are advocates for the project. Um, you know, one thing I took from the meeting is that it's uh, the rail committee meeting where we uh, put together this resolution with the director of DRBT is that, uh, you know, we're kind of at a point where we need to cut through the rhetoric. This has been 20 months uh, ongoing, uh, working on a memorandum of understanding. Um, uh, you know, I, I serve on a local council and uh, $155 million commitment from this board and the state. Um, to me, seems like something you would be beating DRPT's door down uh, to get over the last 20 months um, and to get a deal done. Uh, and after 20 months, I think that uh, this can't continue to be pushed back with $155 million. Uh, limited funds, lots of projects around the Commonwealth, and we need to, um, you know, we need to be responsible with that money. Um, I would encourage the, the city and the council to uh, try to avoid um, uh, leading by referendum, rather lead by uh, being elected. That's what they were elected to do. Uh, you can't hide behind a referendum. If you oppose the project, you vote no. Um, we engage the public every meeting we have, inviting them to speak, going to public hearings. But that doesn't mean that we encourage referendums on every matter and call that public engagement, civic engagement. So I would just encourage the Council uh, of Virginia Beach 
If you support the project, we support the project as a board. We have allocated the money. We're willing and ready to commit that $155 million, but there needs to be a commitment back from Virginia Beach. And we've given an extension of the normal time frame. And it's time to move forward. Vote yes or no. I just had a question on that, if I may. But there's no prohibition on a referendum as long as they make their time on it. So I would be clear up front. We, as a board, and I know personally, have never, ever said that they can't have a referendum. It's just the impact on our decision here. But what you've done is found a way to demonstrate their commitment without prohibiting it, although I certainly take your points well taken that there's been at least one recently and a lot of discussion on this. But am I clear on that? In other words, that there's no prohibition for if they want to do that. Let me clarify. Actually, if that's how they choose to make decisions, that's within their prerogative. But there can't be an expectation that this board sit on $155 million and wait for that. Correct. I just want to make it clear. I mean, they can do basically whatever they want between now and April 30th. But come April 30th, if those documents are provided, all bets are off as far as commitments from us. And I think the board recognizes as well, as you can hear from the comments, is that $155 million is a significant contribution and that those funds could be put to other uses. And as much as we want to make sure that those funds are dedicated to this project, there's a lot of competing needs around the state. And the time frame really was selected in order to give the CTB time to make changes in the six-year plan if needed. I think that's really a drop-dead date for the CTB to know whether or not that commitment is there so that if needed, we could incorporate changes into the six-year plan. And that's probably 75 days right now. We're a little over 75 days. Yes. Okay. Mr. Krasinski. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank the subcommittee for looking into this. And I think John's help, I know his heart and soul is in this project to try to see it to fruition. Just from an individual standpoint as a member of the CTB, though, I'm glad that timeline is there because I think we've demonstrated, you have demonstrated, the administration has demonstrated, bending over backwards to try to help this situation and how the funding was changed to more state funds, et cetera, at that time, and now giving them the 75 days to act. What I don't want to see, and I told John this, we kidded yesterday about everyone having a place for those dollars, but come April, if we're getting it still delay tactic, you know, I am going to be searching for a piece of that money. Very simply put, that we don't want to be back here talking about the same issue at the end of the time frame. So, John, I hope that message is clear as this is broached when you return home. Mr. Mulder. I'd like to thank everyone for their cooperation and engagement in this issue. I know it's been very controversial. I think we've come to an agreement that everyone's going to understand how we move forward at this point. There shouldn't be any confusion or, I think, brought clarity to it. I appreciate the cooperation and work that everyone's put into this. I realize I'm in a shark tank with Gary over here, but that's okay. But, again, thank you very much. I think this is just a very important project for the city of Virginia Beach and the region as well. I think it really puts a project of infrastructure in place for the city to advance in the future as well as the region. So, thank you very much. Okay. Just a couple of things. Oh, Mr. Fraley. I thought we were waiting for the rail subcommittee, so I'm not on that. Oh, okay. The only thing I would reiterate is this is not saying that the project is not a good project. This is saying we can't tie up $155 million, which is a substantial sum. If you look at what we've been able to set aside for projects of statewide significance, that percentage of that is high. And the point that I wanted to make was if we 
continue to tie money up after we've given Virginia Beach a special exemption from going back and being scored under House Bill 2, it's just not fair to everybody else. I mean, if this was a bank and we said, hey, you know, we're willing to fund $155 million of the project, and I go to the bank and say I'm ready to go, I'm going to start paying interest on that money from day one. And, you know, it's just not a very businesslike way to proceed. So I'm fully supportive of it, and I also have a few, Gary, that I can look at. Yeah. Okay. Any other, any more comments on this? All right. What I will do, if it's all right with the board, in the letter, I will reconfirm the board's and the administration's support for the project. I will also invite the city of Virginia Beach, if they'd like to come to a meeting, you know, if they have any questions in regard to this. I think, you know, I've been down there a couple times. I think it's appropriate now. You've given, I think, pretty clear instructions. Invite them up if they would like to come up here. They're more than welcome to do so before April 30th, I understand, in that. I would also encourage any of the public that's listening here, whether you're for or against this project in that area, I think now is the time you need to be speaking to your public officials about this, about this project. So I want to thank everybody. I think we cut all the rhetoric out, give a clear point forward, and just, again, demonstrate we are 100 percent behind this project if Virginia Beach is. And I think I'll end on this. We've always said this is their project. They have to be the ones making the decision. We're not forcing the money on them. We're not trying to take the money back. It's simply tell us what you want to do based on, as you've heard, the exemption, the different things the state's done. So I appreciate the hard work that went into this. What we'll do in the action item part of our meeting, this will come up under new business, and we'll actually vote on the resolution to move this forward. So thank you very much for all the hard work on that. I see Joanne, are you leaving? I know you passed out a brief summary of legislative updates, and Mr. Donahue can make an add to this also. We are at crossover. We're halfway through, and the two large, I guess, initiatives that the Commonwealth was either supporting or were behind, first of all, on the bonding for the 66 outside the Beltway project, that resolution is still, and legislation is alive in the Senate. So I think, I'm in the House, I'm sorry, excuse me, in the House, and it's gone over to the House. It was in the Senate, it's gone to the House. And then the tolling legislation, both in terms of the limitation on tolling, the new concessionaire standards for easy pass, reciprocity, has gone from the House over to the Senate. So at least for the time being, those two initiatives are still in place. Now, Ms. Baxter, was there anything else? I don't know if we handed it out, but I'll throw it over to the Board if there's any particular questions on legislations out there or you want any updates on. Ms. Baxter, do you have anything particular that should be of interest to the Board? No, Mr. Chair, I would just note to the Board that even this list that they have right now, we updated it as of Friday, but so much has happened since Friday that technically this is already out of date. So what we could always do is provide you with an updated version. But things happen fast, as many of you are probably aware, in the last couple of days before crossover. But if there are questions about particular bills, I would note that there are quite a few bills that have either been carried over or tabled this year. So the most significant ones right now, from the Secretary's perspective and the Governor's perspective, are still out there and are still under consideration. Mr. Donahue, did you have a comment? Yes, Mr. Chair, and members of the Board, I would just add that this Sunday, Joanne and I and John Lawson and other folks from VDOT are going to be watching because the budget amendments that have been adopted or approved by the Senate Finance and House Appropriations Committees are going to come out. So a lot of times, you know, legislation 
it's really easy for us to typically work on that and to try and get some of the things that are problematic addressed. Budget amendments, however, are done a little bit differently, and you can say anything in the budget and the budget rules. Um, and so there's a host of problematic budget amendments that are currently out there. The bulk of them essentially say this whole House Bill 2 process we voted for two years ago, let's not do that anymore for my project. It's good for everybody else, but please just exempt my eight projects here in my district, and then we can move forward. So there's a host of things like that that we'll be watching um, to see whether or not those amendments make it through. Um, I do think generally the money committees are supportive of the reforms that we've made, and so it's going to be very telling to see whether or not those budget amendments live um, you know, through the end of this week. And again, Sunday afternoon is when those will come out. We'll also be watching to see whether or not the $50 million for Dulles Airport to really help improve its competitiveness and retain the hub uh, remains in there, as well as the $350 million of general fund back bonds to improve the Port of Virginia is something else we'll be taking a look at to see if there are any changes to that in the uh, amendments that come out this Sunday. Okay, any other any discussion on legislation in front of us? Again, I want to thank all of y'all that did were able to make the, uh, the cocktail reception, and we'll make that an annual uh, uh, event. Uh, at least I get to do it one more time with y'all. After that, you may be somebody else entertaining you, but we'll do that next year. And the governor offered to do it at the mansion next year, so uh, yeah, we'll be doing that. Okay, we have one other item that we're going to have to take up in the action item. Uh, uh, on a new business, but I'll, uh, and it deals with inside the Beltway 66. And I'm gonna let Charlie go through it. That we uh, we talked about yesterday the uh, the agreement. We want to get started. He needs some author authorization. So I'm gonna Charlie. Uh, turn thank you, me. Mr. Secretary. Uh, what I'm asking the board to consider, and uh, I think it's best to take it up under new business this afternoon. Uh, you're all aware of the Project 66 inside the Beltway. Maybe this morning here. Or the, I'm sorry, this morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's hope it's this morning. Uh, 66 inside the Beltway. Again, we have uh, uh, the, the governor and General Assembly, we've reached agreement on a, on a path forward. In order to move forward aggressively, though, we need to uh, complete the environmental, or initiate and then ultimately complete the environmental document. Um, and that will, that work needs to begin now, not waiting till uh, the new budget comes into effect in July. So my request to the board is that you authorize and add this project, 66 inside the Beltway, the widening piece, as a new project to the six-year plan, and authorize up to two million dollars out of the Priority Transportation Fund, which is where we think is probably a good place for the, that initial money to come from, for environmental and engineering work. Uh, once the, the budget process resolves itself, the total funding of the project can be will be clearer. And if we need to, to uh, do a, a debit and crediting accounts to correct that, we can. Um, one of the things as part of this is a commitment that the cost of this project not be uh, taken, taking uh, funds away from the House Bill 2 process. So again, uh, the Priority Trust Fund has, has some funds available, and it does not impact the House Bill 2 process at all. So my request, and again, it will come up under new business to add that project to the six-year plan. That also makes things cleaner with our environmental document with the Federal Highway Administration. When, when it gets uh, commingled with the existing project, it just frankly, it makes things uh, a little more confusing administratively than it, than it needs to be. So again, that would be my ask this afternoon. Any questions, comments on that? We will then obviously. This morning, this sorry. Morning, this morning, yes. I'm jinxing us this I know. morning. <laughs> um, this, uh, uh, we will obviously be reporting back as we work through the six year plan the entire funding, assuming that everything holds the deal and all that, which we think it will. But this allows him to get going uh, and meet the commitment that was reached uh, with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the governor and the, the senior legislator or the leadership of the House and Senate. Mr. Chairman, would we would we be spending money? Is that the idea? We'd be able to also. Yes, two million dollars out of the priority trust fund for okay. him to get started. Yes, we we uh, we've told our staff that uh, they need to get moving now <coughs> on the environmental document. Well, and and that would not be sunk costs either because we can't reach a deal on with the uh, PPTA. We're moving forward with it at the state project, right? This is inside this the is beltway. Inside. Okay, so it is not. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Just inside the beltway. Just well. inside the beltway. Yes. Uh, I don't I'm think it's that now. It's sunk. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. As I recall, Mr. Pellin, you were one that wanted to. Yeah, oh, I'm on. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Yes. Okay, sure. The other, in front of you, you have these initial financial plans. You might wonder what are they. The Code of Virginia requires that on projects valued at over $100 million that a financial plan be developed for the project. We update these on an annual basis. It's not a State of Virginia requirement. It's a federal requirement that we update these plans once a year. It's, again, valued at over $100 million. And then projects over $500 million actually have a higher threshold of review by the Federal Highway Administration. To date, we have not had what I'll call a standardized process and plan for this. And these were, they were coming to us in all different forms and fashions. John Lawson and his team have really consolidated in making this in a consistent format that will be provided. My intent would be to provide these, the initial report, and just provide it for you in case there are questions. And from going forward, the updates will all be posted on our website. This really is about continuing transparency of especially these larger projects where they are available for view, the financial condition of the project. So, again, that's what these three are. This is the first time that these three particular projects have a plan that's been developed for you. And I would ask anyone from Northern Virginia or Mr. Donohue, would you please let Mr. Whitfield know that he can now actually access these online. This has been a consistent complaint of his. And so there's now the easy access. I'll wait for the next email. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. No, thank you. Let me also before, oh, any questions on that first? I saw Mr. Walton walk up here. We want to welcome you back, Mr. Walton. I know you all know Rick had came to my house and then they got on a cruise and we didn't see him for six months. So on that. So glad to see you're back and feeling better. Thank you. Thank you for being here. OK. Any more before the work session? Any other things come up? OK. We will formally close the work session. And now we will enter into the action action part of our agenda. I'll call that meeting to order. And the first topic would be if there's any public comment. Yes. Good morning. No problem. Nancy Smith with the Northern Virginia Transportation Alliance. Also here on behalf of the Northern Virginia Business Transportation Coalition, which is an organization of more than 20 business organizations throughout Northern Virginia that represent the vast majority of private sector employers and employees throughout the region. I wanted to stand here today and first commend the governor, the secretary and deputy secretary Donahue for their hard work on reaching this compromise with the General Assembly leadership on I-66 inside the Beltway. We believe this is I know it was hard work, a lot of long hours, but we do believe this was a critical step forward for the region. It's great news for motorists and transit users throughout the corridor. But more importantly, it is great news for Northern Virginia's continued economic competitiveness and high quality of life. Accelerating the widening from the initial proposal simply addresses an obvious need now that has been so obvious for so many for so long, but has because politics have gotten in the way has often been ignored. So while the original proposal would have eventually gotten us there, the acceleration gets us there now and allows the users of that corridor to see the full benefits of the Transform 66 project a lot sooner and also addresses a 24-7 congestion need throughout the corridor. So therefore, I hope that you will support the resolution before you today and help get this project process started. We also hope that this same spirit of nonpartisan put the people interest first approach that made this compromise possible might next be adopted by Governor McAuliffe and Governor Hogan to move forward on upgrading the American Legion Bridge and also discussions on building a new bridge to the west. I mean, think about it. You fix I-66 inside the Beltway, you build those bridges, you fix a portion perhaps of the Maryland Beltway, and then we have most of the 21st century transportation framework that we need in the Northern Virginia region would be in place. It's doable, but it just takes the same kind of political will we saw over the last few weeks from this administration. I'm quickly moving to 395. 
I just want to say that we are pleased to see that VDOT is moving forward on this project. The last major piece in the entire 95 corridor converting from HOV to hot lanes. We've seen throughout the region the major benefits that the addition of the express lanes on 495 and 95 have brought not only to those providing options for users to be able to have a reliable trip, but have seen improved travel times in the general purpose lanes as well. We're looking forward to those improvements in the 395 portion. And finally, just an observation on your lengthy discussion on House Bill 2 yesterday. I know you probably don't want to go back to that today. You're probably tired of it. But just observing that I think, you know, obviously there's still much work and analysis that needs to be done in developing a truly transparent House Bill 2 process. I mean, I would observe that the House Bill 2 process is advisory and in no way should take away from this board's ability to, one, look at a map and, two, use common sense on what truly are the greatest needs for the Commonwealth with our limited transportation resources. So thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other persons willing or wanting to public comment this morning? Oh, seeing none or hearing none, we will move on to the action agenda. First up is the approval of minutes from January 20th, 2016. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Mr. Coolmay, this is a public-private partnership. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. You have before you today a resolution that has the board accepting and endorsing updates to the PPTA manual and guidelines for 2016 and recommending to DRPT and VDOT that they adopt the guidelines going forward. We had briefed you at the last meeting on the substance, but I'd certainly be willing to answer any questions at this time that would help you with your action. Any questions or comments, Mr. Coolmay? Okay. Is there a motion? Motion. Mr. Secretary, I'd like to propose a motion to delay the vote on this until we have a chance to review a red-line version of the changes that are being discussed or being proposed. We realized in the last year how important the P3 guidelines are, and I think adequate time to review a red-line version would be beneficial to the board. Okay. All right. You second his motion. Let me back up. Did Mr. Whitworth not get a second on his motion? He did not. Did not. Okay. So that's taken care of. So we now have a motion to give the board more time. Yeah, and importantly, that red-line version that highlights the changes from the original. And we have a second. Is there any other discussion on that motion and second? If all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So we'll go through those, and Mr. Coolmay, I'll have you come out and work with the board as to when they're ready to take action on this. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Gregg, the maintenance division. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I have two items for you this morning, two commemorative namings. The first one is in the Bristol District. The Smith County Board of Supervisors wishing to commemorate and honor the life of Albert Mason King, a recipient of the Purple Heart, who was born in August of 1946, died in the line of duty defending this nation on March 24, 1966, passed a resolution requesting the bridge located on Route 600 St. Clair's Road over St. Clair Creek to be named the Albert Mason King, Jr. Bridge. The maintenance division has reviewed this and recommends approval. Yes, Mr. Rosen. Thank you. Mr. Matney called me on this matter, and he unfortunately got snowed in, but regretted not being here to make this motion. So I'll make the motion, but really on his behalf, he really regretted not being able to do this. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's right. The second item is in the Salem District. The Roanoke County Board of Supervisors wishing to commemorate and honor the lives of the Harris family, who provided assistance to many motorists over the years as a result of accidents or other vehicular difficulties in a dangerous curve known as the Harris Curve, 
passed a resolution requesting the bridge located on Route 221 Bent Mountain Road over Back Creek be named the Harris Family Memorial Bridge. Maintenance Division has re reviewed this request and recommends approval. Move approval. All right. Is second. there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Gray. Thank you, sir. Is Dean here? Thank you, Mr. Gusson from here. Dean. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, this morning, this is a, a request for you to authorize our commissioner to enter in a memorandum of understanding uh, and an agreement between VDOT and the Williamsburg Area Transit Authority uh, for award and pass through of a grant uh, that was awarded uh, for the replacement of the engines to the Pocahontas Ferry as part of the Jamestown Scotland Ferry uh, and the, uh, the drive systems. Uh, it's a $3.3 million project as part of a grant from USDOT uh, to Williamsburg Area Transit, uh, again, to make those necessary upgrades. Again, this is an authorization to authorize the commissioner to execute that agreement. I'd like to make a motion. Mr. Marlin? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Mr. Justice. Ms. Pryor. Good morning, Mr. Secretary, members of the board. I have two items for you this morning. The first item, if you recall, um, last month you got a presentation on the um, Transport Innovation and Technology Transportation Fund, as well as the Unpaved Roads Program. And the resolution before you sets aside, <clears throat> excuse me, approximately $75 million through FY21, as well as $25 million in FY22 for the Innovation and Technology Transportation Fund out of the High Priority Program, as well as $25 million in FY21 and $25 million in FY22 for the Unpaved Roads Program out of the District Grant Program. I recommend your approval. Mr. Your comment, Mr. I, I do. I want to make clear to the board that this is simply taking those uh, uh, this, these amounts to put towards these two programs. The projects themselves will be come back to the board for approval and and be added into the six-year plan. So this is not a budget item where the department can then go out and spend as they see fit on these two programs. The individual projects will come back to the board and they will come back in a block on the technology for um, and you'll be able to view those and, and, and see those projects and have any questions answered uh, in both the draft and then the, in the final plan. Regarding the unpaved road program, you see it's in, in the outer years, and I don't know that all those projects have been developed yet, but prior to those projects moving forward to construction, to engineering and construction, they mu they'll be added to the six-year plan. So I just wanted to make that point clear. These are not uh, what I'd call budget items that, give, uh, that can be used uh, statewide without your authorization. Mr. Fellow, um, I'd just like, <coughs> excuse me, um, well, first of all, I'm trying to click on the link to the decision brief. I can't get it to Is work. Is control click not doing it? Yeah, it's not highlighted. But um, I know we were briefed on this last time, so I'm not going to take a whole bunch of time. But And I recognize, Charlie, when we when a project comes before us, is that, does that get added to the six-year plan? How does that, how, do, how is our approval, where is our approval step? The approval would be <coughs> these products, we are, um, the code authorizes up to a specific amount mm -hmm. that can be used for these two programs, for the technology program and the unpaid road program, and prescribes where it comes from. So that's that's what you're doing today, what we're requesting you do today. The individual projects will come to you in the six-year plan process. So the, the draft plan and then the final plan will show all these technology projects to give you opportunity to look at them, see what's going on both statewide and in your district, and ask any questions or, or uh, that we can we can address any concerns you might have about the projects themselves. Okay, I just need to, I just want to point out that what the code according to the resolution, what the code says is any unspent money up to twenty five million. That so is we correct. we are we yeah, are right. we are deciding not to spend twenty five million dollars somewhere else, and we're maximizing this as we're authorized under the code. So. Because of that, I'm just saying I think we need to be very scrupulous about right. what we're doing. And my own bias against the dynamic directional signs, uh, 
I don't know if anybody else shares that, but I do. And um, so anyway, I, I'm going to vote for it, and I think it's probably appropriate. But we are maximizing this, and we don't have to. That, that, is, that is true. I, I will look at um, some of the projects they were scored under these both these programs. Well, first of all, the unpaid roads, we know what the need is. I'm just talking about the technology. Technology. Um, so some of those projects scored extremely high because of the dollars involved and the benefits. But I think you're right. So they would still be scored, wouldn't they, Mr. Uh, Donahue? Uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, I think that is a decision the board could make. I, I think, think when some of these, there might be a lot of this involves cameras and other things that improves incident management, which could help on I-81, <coughs> those accidents, better clearing them. It also could fund things like the Chevrons on the S curves of Buckhannon and I-81. It does <coughs> ramp metering and other things like that. In the San Francisco region, where I think some of this was modeled after, they actually had a something they called the Freeway Performance Initiative, where they went and basically did what the commissioners <coughs> proposed on their major interstate corridors, and they were able to improve reliability and reduce delay with these technology investments by better managing traffic, identifying accidents, clearing them through the ramp metering. So it's it's intended to be kind of a small pot of money that has it's low cost but has big benefits. No, I, I, I get that, Mr. Chairman. I think I think technology employed today is outdated tomorrow. Yeah. And sure. and we've we've we have that with the signage sometimes, and I think we need to be careful about that. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I, I, it, it very well may, and they're going to score well under House Bill too because the denominator is low. Yeah. That, that's you know the first page of everything that scored well under House Bill two. There's nothing in that in that that's over, you know I think 11 million dollars. So it will score. Well. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I personally found the technology presentation we got very fascinating, and one of the things that came up was an idea that I believe Mr. Chairman and Mr. Connor had discussed about perhaps setting up a subcommittee of this board on technology. Um, and so I just didn't know if that were. It is. We were going to, we can, I was going to bring that up on your new business. Uh, but we can bring that, after this vote, we can bring it up on uh, uh, now. But I think that's probably better under new business. Um, technology. Because I do think, you know, your issue about, you know, everything's outdated by tomorrow. So I think that subcommittee could actually help us address some of those concerns. Yeah. And, and if I, I could, uh, uh, as Dean made his presentation uh, a month ago now, there is a uh, prioritization process that they are going through. And, and I want to uh, reassure the board that it's not simply, hey, gosh, look, we got some money. Let's go put up another camera or another dynamic message board. Um, some of the projects, and, and I, I, I agree with you, the technology is moving very rapidly. Um, there are things that uh, uh, have, have worked for a long time in this technology world. Just a couple of examples. Um, overheight detection is something that we, where we have high numbers of bridge strikes. And uh, it's an important thing for us. At the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, especially in the westbound direction where we, we have the original tunnel, uh, better overheight detection is so important for traffic management. On Afton Mountain and on Fancy Gap Mountain, we have um, uh, technology deployed for uh, tra active traffic management, but different from what people think of, of uh, in terms of that. It's really about weather detection, weather warning, and, uh, and trying to better control travel uh, speeds in adverse conditions. And then you have the examples up on 66 with lane control. We have ramp metering. So it's, it's that entire world of, of projects. But to your point, I think, and this is something the dean and his folks are being very uh, deliberate about, not just simply, hey, let's add one more of those, if that technology is frankly being retired by, by other technologies. So, so I do think that uh, that, that is uh, keen in his, in his, uh, his thinking and his team's thinking. And uh, uh, again, the reminders from this board are helpful in making sure we don't go down a, a, a dead end on, on technology. Well, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I mean, I think that's, I agree with all that. I mean, I'm not against the I technology. I'm not against the $25 million. But you look at something like ramp monitoring. You can do that on Google Maps. I mean, you can look at that every day at certain times, and it'll tell you whether or not it's backing up. So I can't make somebody stop on Google Maps. No. Well, I mean, I'm not, I don't understand it all. I mean, clearly, I don't understand it all, but I, I'm just be careful. You shouldn't be looking at your phone while you're driving. 
No, I'm talking about some operations center somewhere where they monitor this stuff. Anyway. Okay. And the next item. I'm sorry, is there a motion? We need a motion. I move the motion. Is there a second? Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Now, Ms. Pryor. Second item is our normal monthly transfers. I will point out there's a slight error on the report that's in front of you. I have revised copies coming over to you. I thought they'd be here by now, so I apologize. The last three transactions are actually an error and shouldn't be shown, so I'll get you a revised copy of that. But I do recommend your approval of the transfers. Okay. Is there a motion? Second. Second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I don't want to slow the train down, but I'd like a minute to look at what's not on here anymore. And now I'm trying to open it up. Oh, can we not see it? It's okay. Okay. Let's take a minute then. Take a minute. It's an incorrect. It's shown as a transfer of Garvey's to an I-95 project, and it's an error, and it's rolled back, and it's undone. It shouldn't be shown on the report, so I apologize for that. No, no. I get that, but I just want to make sure we slow the train down and look at it before we vote on it. Absolutely. So what is it again? It's the last three line items shown on the report, and it's a transfer of what looks like a transfer of what is Garvey bonds to an I-95 project, and it should not be shown on there. Is this the statewide safety rail balance? I want to look at it, but was it not available before? Did we not get it out in time? I'm just making sure. No, no. It was. Okay. I corrected it. Right. Oh, fine. I have a corrected version coming. Okay. Great. Good. Good. So it's M, N, and O? No, sir. It should be 20, 21, and 22. I don't see it on there. This doesn't go that far. Yeah. I move we take this by for temporarily until we get the document. Let me come back to it when I have the correction. Why don't you come back and get this up so they can look at it, or either a hard copy. Great. You get to them, and then we'll come back to this one, Ms. Pryor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Next we have up Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. The item that we have is simply an authorization for a construction agreement, project agreement for I-64-264 interchange in Hampton Roads. The reason for the project agreement is this is multiple fund source, and this is so that the commissioner can sign that agreement with HR TAC. It's currently under preliminary engineering, and right-of-way phases are ongoing, and this would allow the agreement for funding to go to construction once those phases are complete. Before we make a motion, is there a typo on this one on page 2, first paragraph, that April 30, 2016 date? I don't have the resolution in front of me. Yes. Yes. What's the typo then? Is it April 15, 2015? I mean, I don't know what the date should be, but I don't think it's supposed to be that date. No, I believe it's 2015, but we need to correct that. The initial agreement with HR TAC was back in 2015, and we need to confirm that date. So unless staff has that, they're checking now, 2015. So we need to correct the date on the second page that says, and on April 3, 2016, it's now 2015, VDOT and HR TAC entered into a set agreement. Okay. So first of all, we need to have a motion for the amendment. Is there a motion? Second. Is there a second? Any discussion on the amendment? All those, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The amendment's adopted. Now we need a motion on the actual item. Second. 
Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So those are the HR TAC contracts. That That's correct. And, and again, this project, with, with the exception of a small amount of engineering that was previously uh, funded in the six-year plan, this, this project is funded by HR TAC funds. And we are uh, in the process going out to bid on it, on this project. Okay. Thanks, sir. All right. <laughs> Mr. Lawson. Hi, good morning. Uh, before you, you have a resolution to uh, ad adopt the changes or the revised um, guidelines for the TPOF program, I presented to you last month. The guidelines were updated to reflect the, the changes in the, 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 the law as it relates to um, the, the eligibility requirements of the program. I ask for, for your uh, approvals. Can everyone see this on there? Okay. At, Mr. Lawson, before we do this, I had a question to ask you. Are we making progress that came up uh, on revising the six-year plan by revenue source? Well, Mr. Fernand was talking about mm -hmm. seeing these projects that are technology. Is that going to be spelled out so they can easily identify what, where these funds are funded from? We are currently to kind of revising the look of, of the program, okay. and uh, we, can, we can certainly take that under advisement to make sure we, we make it clearer. Yeah, I think uh, that might help in that so they know exactly what's going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, yes, Mr. Freeland. Mr. Chairman, I just want to point out, I mean, and, and probably appropriately so, but what we're doing is authorizing this, and we don't see it again. The, the governor makes that decision based on consulting with the advisory panel. Which is fine. I think you know a lot of these deals they need to move on faster than what we're able to do. But uh, so I'm for it. But. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Yes. Um, is there a, uh, a motion? So yeah. moved. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank, Thank you. you. Sally's, we got some bids coming up. Good morning. Since the board last met, the department has taken in bids on 92 projects valued at $266 million. Of those, nine have to go before the board for award. Seven of those are asphalt resurfacing contracts. You have those in the ballot before you. I'd like to present them as you have them on the ballot. Uh, the first project is order number 910. This is a plant mix contract in Fairfax County. We had two bidders. It, uh, th this project was a little bit unique in that there was a lot of handwork for patching, so it was a little bit more expensive than anticipated to do. And uh, that's why you'll notice it's a little bit higher than the, the planning estimate was. But we have compared it to our value investment. We think it represents good value, and we're recommending it for award. This is on the I-64, Mr. Malden. Uh, do, you, or do you need to stand? No, I, I can just vote on that. Mr. Chairman, are we vote on these in a block or individually? Well, what would you? Uh, we typically like to vote on them individually. That's fine. I just didn't. Yeah, just didn't. So the say. first one's nine ten. What yeah. nine ten? Yeah. Okay. Northern, Northern Virginia. Northern, okay. Nine, uh, motion. Yeah. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that one. Let me get let me get it up here too. Here. Second is order 105. This is a plant mix contract in Bristol. Two competitors. We think it represents good value. Recommending a little award. Mr. Matt, he's not here. So move that motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Order 408. This is a plant mix contract in Chesterfield. Three competitors. We think it represents good value. Recommending a full award. Mr. Brown. So moved. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. 607, this is a plant mix in Middlesex County. Three competitors. We think it represents good value. Recommending it for award. Mr. Chairman, I have to abstain on this one. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 909. 
Another plant mix in Fairfax County for competitors. We think it represents good value. We're recommending it for award. Mr. Kozinski. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Next project is order I-11. This is the intersection of Route 1 and 123. We had four competitors. You will notice it is somewhat over the planning estimate. It is slightly over the evaluative estimate. We had just about everybody competing that we would expect would compete on this project. The second bidder was actually $53 million. So we have analyzed this bid due to its nature. We think we have good value and we're recommending it for award. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Mr. Chairman, this is a $43 million thing, so I think it's worthwhile to slow down and ask some questions about because we're over quite a bit for $7 million or so. And is the reason it's, it says widening, but it's not widening much. Is it an intersection improvement? Well, it's widening in preparation for a diamond interchange that's sometime in the future. Right now it's not in the six-year plan, but it's widening utility relocations, signalization, everything in preparation for what will be the final diamond interchange. So why are we spending money on a project that may or may not score well under House Bill 2? If I could talk a little bit to this project. So US 1123, it's in Woodbridge, just south of the Occoquan River. We have, over the last several years, been acquiring right-of-way, demolishing buildings, and moving utilities along the 123 Route 1 corridor. This project, this phase of the project is one that will, I'll call it interim improvements. We actually move the utilities for the ultimate grade separation, but that project is, again, would have to be scored under House Bill 2. It's not, that project is not funded for construction, the second phase. In terms of location, I don't know if folks familiar with this area, it's a pretty tough spot. You have a significant amount of utility work. You have a railroad, the VRE, and CSX line run immediately adjacent to the property, to the project. And so, again, this is one that, there is clear value in the project that's being, this is going to construction now. It's a design bid-build project, and this is to award the construction. The other phase would go through the House Bill 2 process, unless it was non-House Bill 2 funds. And at this point, I anticipate that at some point the county would come back in the future with the rest of the project. But this should last us some time. Let me ask another question, if I might. If it's design, bid, build, did we look at value engineering to try to get it more in line with what we anticipated? With projects of this scale, value engineering is a requirement. It's part of our process as we go through the design, bid, build process. And again, frankly, part of the reason that we're not going to what I'll call the ultimate was that we just could not afford the ultimate project. So this project has been in development for, gosh, as long as I've been back at VDOT, six, seven years at least, to develop this interim phase with the idea of trying to limit the amount of rework at some point in the future. So yeah, value engineering was a part of this process. To tell you the specifics without going back and reading the reports, I don't think I understand. Bill. Yes, Mr. President. I would add that this phase, as the Commissioner stated, is the gateway to Prince William on the Route 1 revitalization. So beyond the interchange that it has to come and go before us and go through the HB2 process, this phase alone is important to the county. They've authorized the undergrounding of utilities already on their ticket in this phase. And I've authorized, we have some surplus funds transferred over so we can have the delta that we're missing. And the county, again, has contributed another $1.6 million towards this just on an email I just got from Jan Vaughan. Okay. Well, I mean, Mr. Chairman, I'll defer to the members that represent it. But 
I just thought I'd answer that. No, I think it's a good point. So let me make sure I understand about the House Bill 2, Charlie. This was in the six-year plan. Fully funded. Fully funded before House Bill 2 came into existence. Yes, sir. Okay, so any future would be under the House Bill 2 process. That is correct. Okay. Which is the diamond in it. The diamond. Okay, got it. I just want to make sure. Any other questions? We need a motion. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Next project on your ballot is order number 907, another plant mix in Fairfax, three competitors. We think it represents good value. We're recommending it for award. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Order number 913, another plant mix in Fairfax County, three competitors again. It represents good value. We're recommending it for award. Motion. Second. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the final project. Mr. Chairman, just a quick question, just for my own edification. So I see the reference plant mix. I see that these are both Fairfax County. I see that there are. What is the scope difference in these types of bids that you would have them separated or unbundled? Primarily location. Sometimes by type of roadway as well. So separate projects but very similar in scope because the pricing is kind of in somewhat the same ballpark. Well, we typically break up interstate as a separate entity, and then a lot of times secondary road paving is a separate entity, and then by the region, by the county, and in Fairfax County sub-region. Okay. Because both of these are secondary, I noticed, and I guess is the – I was just trying to understand why they were – the description seemed very similar from what you present to us, so I didn't understand why they were two separate bids as opposed to one. In highly urbanized areas, a lot of times the maintenance area that's responsible for that, we will have a contract in that maintenance area for all the subdivisions, for instance, on the secondary. In that maintenance area, they will all be grouped together. The coordination – it allows for coordination. You can stockpile materials. You can have patching work all done in one area. I guess the other question is that it's probably a positive that you have different winners on the bids, but, again, I didn't know whether that was because of the nature of the work that they were doing. Again, similar geographic area, just trying to understand. And the other reason for schedule type work, and this has happened in your district, where I've actually had them break up a $15 million project over several counties because what happens, it's so big that they're basically subbing to everybody else, so it promotes competition oftentimes when we break these up because that capacity may be too big for one producer or they may have to have longer haul distances, which costs more. So if you break it down into the shorter haul distances and the smaller digestible chunks, it promotes competition. So that's another reason for it. That's very good. All right, thank you. And the final job on the ballot today is order number I-62. This is an on-call signal project in the southwest region. We had two competitors. That's about all that we usually get on signal work. We have about four firms that do this kind of work across the state. This being the southwest region, we have two. The winner actually is a new player for us. He hasn't done very much VDOT work in the past, so we're happy to have him in the mix, and it drove down prices. So we think we have a good value. We're recommending it for award. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Sure. Just so everybody knows, I'm not just asking questions on everybody else's stuff. I don't remember seeing this, and it probably is because we didn't have to transfer any money to it, but I'd like to know more about what the signalization is. What are we doing? If I could, on this type of contract, first of all, the source of funding are maintenance funds. Okay. This is in the southwest region. It picks up Lynchburg, it picks up Bristol, and it picks up the Salem districts. And so what this project, what this does is it provides that upgrading of signal to the heads themselves, any rework that needs to be done at a signal that includes 
if there's structural repairs to the, to the signal system. Uh, this particular one may involve some replacements of existing signals. Now, as an example, if we have an old span wire signal, we may replace it with a pole and an arm, that that's what this is used for. So the traffic engineering staff in, the, in this region use these contracts, and we have them in each of the regions. In some places, we have more than one contract in a region to do uh, all manner of signal repair work. In-house, we have very few signal repair technicians, and basically our folks that are actually VDOT employees, they only can do troubleshooting type work. Well, they can build an entire signal, but we just don't have enough resources to do that. So the work that they're doing, the guys in the bucket trucks, they're kind of troubleshooting, but this really is for the, the main maintenance of our signal systems throughout throughout those three districts. Are, are these signalizations going to be remotely controlled in any way? Um, in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. Most of our signals are uh, we are able to monitor them remotely. There are a few exceptions where where they're not. The the most advanced system is in Northern Virginia where uh, in, in most cases they can actually monitor the signal both, uh, I'll call it electronically, but also visually through the camera detection. Many of the signals have cameras and they can make, uh, make adjustments uh, from, the, from the operation center. In the southwest region, a number of those signals, we can do that also, but, but again, not all of them. And, and what, what usually prevents that from happening is uh, lack of comm, good communications equipment. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a rural signal, um, we just may not have uh, communications equipment available. Well, just curiosity, why is it listed as Salem District if it's three, three districts? That the Salem District is where this uh, 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 Southwest Region is housed. Southwest Region is housed at, uh, at the uh, uh, operations center there in Salem. Okay. And, and a final observation on these bids, it, it may be helpful, man, and maybe it's just me, it may be helpful to have what the bids are, maybe some diagram stuff, you know, just so we can, it may cut down on the number of questions we have about a particular bid if we could get more than just the line and how much it costs. Uh, we, we can, uh, and, and uh, on this particular one, I'm going to make sure that uh, it Ken follows up directly with you on, on what the details are okay. of the project. Um, Again, what, what the contract will look like are page after page of, of uh, uh, I don't want the contract. Specific. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm talking about just lining up where it is, what it's doing, just, you know, paragraph. Okay. Thank you. Okay, after that, do you have a motion? One more question. Oh, sorry. Mr. Okay. Mr. Commissioner, is sorry. this a fixed price contract for variable scope of work? Or no, is this enough to exceed? No, it's a, it's a unit, what, what we would call a design. It's a unit cost contract. In other words, signal head is, is uh, this much, and we estimate the quantity, and uh, we pay based on the actual quantity. And that's how this is, these kinds of contracts. All of our design, nearly all of our design bid build contracts are this or this style also. The difference here is this is an on-call, so you estimate the quantities and then you pay based on the actual. So the actual could be above or below this? The actual quantity, but not the unit cost. Okay, yes. so the actual dollar amount. Dollar that, dollar that, dollar. that is correct, that is correct. Okay. Okay, is there a motion? To move. Is there a second? Second. second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are we opposed? Okay. The one other piece of business is last month we presented a design build project on I-64 and the ballot had information that said it was federally funded. The commissioner correctly identified that it was HR TAC funds, so we presented that ballot just to make that part of the record that shows the HR TAC funds. Do we need a motion on that or just information? Mr. Wall, do we need a motion? To approve the record. To I'll tell you what, Can't I'll hurt. take a motion to approve the record. Is there a motion? Same Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think that brings us to Mr. Chairman, new, I'm hi, sorry. Mr. Pryor. Just an observation. Um, Ms. Pryor. Yes. We uh, just approved 10 contracts worth about $240 million. Dollars. Um, I know we talked about this before, and I prefaced it by saying if somebody's working on it, I apologize. But 
how can we measure the economic value of these actions that we take every month? This governor likes to talk about job creation. Can we work with VEDP to figure out another formula? We can talk about the multiplier effect. To show people that investment in infrastructure is a good thing. I think that's a laudable goal. I think we have no staff to do it, just to be frank with you in that regard. I'll be happy to take it under advisement to see, Charlie, if anybody we can pass on. I don't know that we know exactly what the economic impact of these jobs are. I mean, I know there is some. It's just that's something that we don't. There have been Chimura. There have been other economists. George Mason has done some work. They do some studies of the economic value of transportation projects. I know VTCA, the Construction Alliance, has done some similar things. And ARTBA, which is the National Road Builders Association, have done some of those things. As the Secretary said, let us take that back. But some of it is bandwidth for us. And I'm not sure that, again, unless the Board desires to expend the consultant resource to do that kind of work. But let me see what – let me take that back. We do have some very bright economists at the Research Council that may be able to help with that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I just got a text here that's from – it says – what does it say, Mr. Donahue? It says 28,000 jobs per billion is back of the envelope. Every billion that we spend is about 28,000 jobs created. So let us take a look at – That was very fast. Take a look at that. We have very bright technicians. But, of course, what the Governor likes to report is actual jobs and economic input. So we'll see if we can come up with how we might do that. Created or sustained jobs. Sustained, yes. Ms. Pryor. Let's go back to that item. Thank you. I've distributed a revised transfer report to you. Just so you're aware, you get two transfer reports from me each month. One has numbers in the left column, and those are the transfers that you actually approve. The second list has letters denoting each transaction. Those are the transfers provided for your information. So the correction is made to the list that you're actually approving today, and what you have before you is a corrected version. So I recommend your approval. We had a motion to second. So are there any comments or any questions? Well, Mr. Chairman, I just want to know, again, what came out and why did it come out? It was incorrectly shown as a transfer of Garvey's to an I-95 project, which has not been done. It's just an error. It may come back. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Pryor. Thank you. I think that now brings us to new business. I think Mr. Dyke. Yes. We have a formal motion from the Rail Committee with respect to Virginia Beach. I think everybody has a copy in front of them. Do you want me to go through this or just maybe read the resolve, be it resolved, or is this sufficient just to move it after our earlier discussion? I'll have to ask Mr. Walton. Do we need to read the resolution? It probably would be appropriate to read the resolution. That way for people at home and everything can see here. So why don't we read the resolution? Okay. I know it's a little long, but I think it's worthwhile for us to do that. Would you like me to second it? That would be motion made. Is there a second? Okay. Why don't we do that before there's any discussion or vote? Okay. Mr. Dyke. Whereas the Commonwealth has demonstrated its support for the Virginia Beach light rail extension as a multimodal transportation solution that will have benefits for local accessibility and mobility while leveraging past investments in the Norfolk light rail project known as the TIDE, and whereas in Chapter 6 of the 2008 Acts of Assembly, Special Session 2, the Virginia General Assembly resolved to provide for the extension of the proposed light rail system in the city of Norfolk to the beachfront in the city of Virginia Beach, and whereas in 2009 the Virginia Department of Transportation executed an agreement with Hampton Roads Transit and the Virginia Beach City Council to utilize revenues from the Transportation Partnership 
opportunity fund to purchase an active Norfolk Southern right-of-way to be used for the future alignment of light rail from Norfolk to Virginia Beach. And whereas in 2009, Hampton Roads Transit initiated an alternatives analysis and supplemental draft environmental impact statement for the Virginia Beach Transit Extension Study, and whereas in March 2014, the City of Virginia Beach requested that HRT include an alignment which would terminate the proposed transit extension at Town Center in an effort to inform the City Council on all the potential costs of a Town Center alternative as part of its adoption of a locally preferred alternative. Whereas in May 2014, the Commonwealth of Virginia and the City of Virginia Beach finalized a term sheet that outlined the respective funding contributions of the Commonwealth and the City for the light rail project, the Commonwealth pledging to contribute 50% of the project funding up to a total of $155 million. Whereas in May 2015, the Virginia Beach City Council and Hampton Roads Transit selected a preferred route to extend light rail from Newtown Road to Town Center in Virginia Beach. And whereas 33.2-214B of the Code of Virginia requires the Board to adopt by July 1 of each year a six-year improvement program of anticipated projects and programs, and that the program shall be based on the most recent official revenue forecast and a debt management policy. And whereas after due consideration, the Board adopted a final fiscal year's 2016-2021 program on June 17, 2015. And whereas the Board programmed $155 million of funding for the Virginia Beach light rail extension project in the final fiscal year's FY 2016-2021 program, representing approximately 50% of the project's estimated capital cost. And whereas the Board programmed these funds based on a schedule in which it was anticipated that in FY 2016, HRT would apply to the Department of Rail and Public Transportation for funding to acquire light rail vehicles, and the City of Virginia Beach would apply for funding to commence construction in FY 2017. And whereas the City of Virginia Beach has not yet committed its local funding share for light rail vehicle acquisition or construction of the project through any formal City Council actions, nor has the City submitted a grant application for funding from the Department of Rail and Public Transportation for funding in FY 2017. And whereas the City of Virginia Beach has not yet executed a memorandum of understanding between the City of Virginia Beach, the Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads, and the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation concerning the extension of light rail from Norfolk to Virginia Beach Town Center, and whereas the Board recognizes that the Commonwealth Transportation Fund program for the project could be programmed for other projects in the FY 2017 through 2022 six-year improvement program after those projects have been rated in accordance with the House Bill 2 process. Be it therefore resolved that the Board reaffirms its commitment to the Virginia Beach light rail extension project and authorizes the Chairman of the Commonwealth Transportation Board to inform the City of Virginia Beach that by April 30, 2016, the City must demonstrate its commitment to the project by authorizing the Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads to submit an application to the Department of Rail and Public Transportation for funding for the procurement of light rail vehicles and must execute a mutually agreeable memorandum of understanding among the City of Virginia Beach, the Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads, and the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation. In the absence of such affirmative actions by the City of Virginia Beach by the stated deadlines, the Board may reallocate these funds to other eligible projects that have been rated in accordance with House Bill 2. So moved, Mr. Chairman. There was a second. Is there any other discussion on this? I have one question I just want to make sure. So this, 
because of a comment that came up yesterday, this does not obligate the city to any type of long-term construction. In other words, this comment that they can't make a decision because they don't know the cost, this is not addressed by that. So there's no obligation in that. We're simply asking them to get back on schedule, get the acquisition of the cars, wind up participating with the state in signing the MOU. So I just want to make sure that's clear in that. Mr. Whitmer. Do I also understand that really there is no commitment of funds required at this point for anything? Is that correct? The light rail vehicles, there is a commitment of funds. There's a commitment to apply. The city council has approved funds in its budget that could be utilized for the vehicles. However, they've also restricted the ability of the city to authorize Hampton Roads Transit to move forward with a vehicle purchase and commit those funds until they pass a resolution authorizing them to do that. What we have outlined here is, as the secretary mentioned, it's a funding commitment for the vehicles, which are really the most schedule critical item right now, but not necessarily for the full construction of the project. We had always anticipated that that would come later. So there is a commitment of dollars with this. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rose. One thing that I just make sure for the record that when you get your comments, part of what they must do is also submit an application to the RPT. Right. Yeah. Okay. If there are no more discussion or comments, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I have a legal question. As a courtesy, I know this is now a public document. Is that correct, Mr. Walton? So I will apologize to Virginia Beach that this will be seen by the public and the press, but I will get a letter to them over and above this, but we will provide this to the press since now that it is public. So I just want to officially let Virginia Beach know I will get this out to them. We'll get it out to them immediately with a letter coming today. Okay. I think that takes care of that item. Mr. Kilpatrick had a motion. We've passed out to you now a resolution to add the 66 inside the beltway, the widening improvements that have been currently going through the budget process, the General Assembly, and to allocate $2 million out of the Priority Trust Fund for the engineering work necessary for this project. And I ask for your consideration and approval. So moved. Is there a second? Any other further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I have one final item, and that is Mr. Connors has been talking to me about, and actually not a technology council, but an innovative and technology subcommittee, which he has gracefully agreed to chair. And I would ask if there would be any volunteers to work with Mr. Connors on that. Mr. Rosen, Mr. Kasperitz, Mr. Tom, and Ms. Valentine. Okay. So, Mr. Brown, so it won't hit the whole team. Oh, no, I think that's fine. And what I would encourage to do is that we will work with VDOT here on this, what Mr. Fralin brought up and others in terms of the use of those monies or any other comments the subcommittee may want to bring forward to the board to consider. I think that this works well with some standing groups that exist within our organization. There's a federally recognized program. I'm going to get the acronym wrong. But a technology investment group that is recognized federally and actually can receive some small amounts of funds for exploring technology. So we can, we'll work with our staff bringing together maybe some suggestions on how we can provide information to this group. Thank you both. Thank you. 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 Th
look forward to uh, bringing you back some great opportunity. Well, again, I would encourage – oh, uh, Mr. Dyke, yes. Just a question. Since the rail committee meets at 8.30 before our meeting, does that mean this committee meets at 7.30? 6.30. <laughs> <30. laughs> we never go to bed. <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, just, uh, I think that's a good idea. This is something, Mr. Connors, that we can get with uh, Charlie here uh, and figure out how best would serve not only the board, but uh, working in that regard. So I uh, appreciate uh, those willing to serve in that. Thank you all. Mr. Yes. Chairman, I would just like to say I did not realize this was under new business when I brought up the comment early, um, earlier in the meeting. Uh, well, Mr. Connors, I meant to act on it last month. Uh, and I actually meant to call you to ask for volunteers, but <laughs> it, uh, uh, the events uh, sort of took over this past month. And so I do appreciate those who have volunteered um, uh, to do this. I think it will be an important part of our six-year plan, House Bill 2, this whole thing of uh, how do we use our monies more wisely. Um, is there any more business to come before the board today? Mr. Chairman, did we go back to the... Uh Ms. Pryor's item? Yes, we may. Well, did we, did we approve that? No. Yeah, we did do that, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yes. So we did do that. Um, for any announcement, next uh, month we're here? Yes. Um, and still um, planning on a uh, two day meeting? Yes. Yes, planning on two day meeting. We've got some things we'll need to catch up on. And of course, we'll have a lot more um, detail on where we are with the, uh, the budget. Uh, and uh, and legislative uh, issues that uh, that will affect this board. Any other comments? Well, hearing none, thank you all for your hard work, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.